I'm here at the Manawatu River, one of the most polluted rivers in New Zealand. And uh, unfortunately, we now have about 70% of New Zealand's ecosystems under threat because of what this market construct is doing to the environment and human psychology. So if we want to improve our public health, our broad public health, we're going to really have to re redefine the social contract redefine how we actually look at each other in relationship to the environment and um, unfortunately just looking at this now it's going to only going to get worse until we really start to address these structural issues we're heading into a resource-based economy which is one that actually accounts for the resources it actually accounts for the biodiversity and our life support we have ignored the life ground of value for so long because the ruling delusion within the current paradigm is that value is created by the global market. No. The, the global market does not create anything. It now destroys more than it produces. And money exchanges is also part of the delusion. No value comes from the exchange itself. The real life ground of value starts with the reproduction of the Earth's climate and hydrological systems, the soil cover, the forests, and fellow species and all the biodiversity that supports and enables us to exist. And until we start to realize that the life ground of value is all that actually matters, uh, the market construct is going to cumulatively destroy everything. And what I mean by that is it has to destroy everything if I want to grow my Kiwi Saver. It has to destroy everything if we want to pretend that this national debt can be paid back. The debt can never be paid back, and if we pretend that it's some sort of physical law like gravity, um, then we're only going to destroy everything. All the water, sewer, water and sewer systems and everything that actually makes a society livable is going to need to be destroyed in order for us to have those digits on the screens going up. And that's really what this cancer system is doing. There is no life coordinate in this whole theory, this whole doctrine. What are they doing? What are they doing? What they're doing is tracking money sequences. That's all it is, is tracking money sequences, presupposing everything that matters. Scarcity and imbalance. Money moves based only on inefficiency, imbalance, scarcity. That's the driver of it. And when you realize that, when you realize the, the anti-steady state nature of this, you realize that the dynamic is fueled by scarcity. The driving mechanism is deprivation. How could we ever expect, ever expect there to be balance in the world? Abundance and equality just simply can't emerge in the system. It's impossible. So, in the human health, in the, on the human health realm, on the public, excuse me, the public health level, is that good for us? Obviously not. We need to meet human needs. The vast majority of crimes are related to money. They're related to people that can't get their basic needs met. They're related to all sorts of other complex layers of conditions that happen from scarcity, from familial, familial developments that create this spiral, as I'll mention in a second, this spiral of distortion for human behavior, and malintent, and mental neuroses. So meeting human needs is critical. So why would you want a society scientifically that can't do that? We need to stop approaching violence as as a moral problem and realize that morality itself is the problem. The whole system has to go. The modern criminal justice system is incompatible with neuroscience. It simply is not possible to have the two of them in the same room. The politicians thrive of creating enemies out of the most abused segments of the population. They thrive of creating fear of them. They thrive of adopting and educating punitive, harsh attitudes towards them. May God forgive them, because what they're doing is, is they're further entrenching these people in their addictions. The, 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 uh, the research literature is very clear. The biggest driver of addictive relapse is stress. When you marginalize our societies, criminalize people, impoverish them, mar and, 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 and banish them beyond the social periphery, you're simply making sure that they're going to stay addicted. So in the context of the present system, there's simply no hope for the large-scale rehabilitation and for all the good people that work in corrections and for all the idealistic efforts that they put into it and for all the individual victories that um, 
somebody in corrections or somebody in addiction treatment, a counselor or a physician like myself might occasionally witness, for the most part, the system is almost designed to keep people entrenched in misery. Thank you. Again, I emphasize it appears to be the most anti-moral system one can imagine, but in fact it is a moral system and is defended as a moral system and uh, through the uh, notion of the free market and the self-maximizing atoms optimizing uh, consequences by an invisible hand that will necessarily turn out this way. It is a morality. It's a crazy morality, but it is one. It is an ethic. Having clean, say, unpolluted water in your home might seem like a nice thing and gesture, but the fact that money is not being exchanged for that is anathema to the economic sustainability that we've come to understand. So more pollution means more profit. More disease means more jobs. Ad infinitum. In fact, I would go so far to say, as pointed out here, that sustainability, efficiency, and preservation empirically are the enemies of our economic system. And that's unfortunately the firm reality. I would even go so far to challenge for those out there that um, basically at this stage are not in favor of the complete abolition of the market economy as the solution to the destruction of our environment, not to mention the collapse of the social order itself we are seeing while working to replace this system with a truly technical approach for resource management, proper scientific allocation, seeking the highest level of efficiency possible at every turn in production and distribution for maximum sustainability, which is a technical distinction, including proper allocation of labor and everything else, really just engaging in patchwork. It's not going to do anything in the long run and we're wasting time because time is literally running out. The facts are undeniable that we are not clean green in our lowland areas. So do you expect with a statement like 100% pure that we should be 100% uh, or as close to it, to it, or do you accept that marketing is marketing and that it isn't necessarily a representation of fact? I, all I ask is that we stop declining. I mean, we, we've got shocking levels of, of pollution already. 96% of our lowland rivers you can't swim in if you'll, or you'll get sick. Um, I just want to stop, the, stop it from getting worse and I don't think the politicians that are, that are you know, talking around this or the people who have problems with what I'm saying have any idea of just how bad things are and the fact that we're not getting better, we're getting worse. I think it's ultimately a knowledge war and that we live in a knowledge, a knowledge world and knowledge is what's going to determine whether we sink or advance. If we don't live in accordance with the natural resources, we can't live. You, you can't designate a population of 10 million without doing a study of the resources you have. After you study, we have enough resources to support so many billions of people. And if you exceed that, you're going to have starvation, malnutrition, territorial disputes. If you maintain a population in accordance with the carrying capacity of the Earth, no opinions of senators. Politics was great a hundred years ago. Today it's all obsolete. You're talking revolution. No. When society breaks Technical down. Technical revolution. But when society breaks down, then they'll want to do it a different way. I'm sorry about that. What does it say on here? In God we trust. This is God. Doesn't she look uh, so much better I'm worried now? about the can uh, though, Philip. Yeah. I'm worried about the can. In what sense? Well, made in a factory in China. Oh yes, yeah. Part of the problem. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you could probably can't get cans made here. This realization that our true economic benchmark is science, and hence the self-evident calculation requirement needed to streamline our efficiency, inherently voids the entire basis, again, of free market economics itself. I can't reiterate that enough for it simply makes zero technical sense scientifically and is in fact provably now working against our survival and accelerating. 10 years? <laughs> no, we, we don't have 10 years. <laughs> this paradox has been responsible for the tremendous success of capitalism over the last two centuries. But here's the irony, the very success of this paradox is now leading to an end game and uh, a new paradigm emerging out of capitalism. 
Well, you might have a big fat mortgage and a big fat interest rate to service that mortgage. I know I certainly do. But what if we told you that the money the bank lent you doesn't actually exist? You're paying interest on a loan that's been conjured up out of thin air. Sounds crazy. <laughs> So, if you want to learn more about the cancer stage of capitalism, you can uh, look at my website. There's lots of information there about what this system is, what it's doing, and the inner logic of recovery from that. Because once the system disorder is understood, the inner logic of recovery is self-evident and cannot be coherently denied. You know, and it's a simple... I don't want to do an advertisement for you, but that is beautiful air. Yes. I'm a believer in freedom. Every time you hear the word freedom being said anywhere or government interference said anywhere, it means decoded, blocking maximization of turning money into more money for private money possessors. That's it.